What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Redstone with Ripper. This is episode 9 and today we will be covering a topic that I would say a lot of people don't really know a lot about and that is block swappers. So let's get straight into it. So block swappers are a thing in Redstone that a lot of people aren't really sure of I find. I know I wasn't really sure of them when I started but really you've just got to kind of think about them and you need a certain type of way of thinking about it kind of. I, I know I may not be explaining that too well but I'll try and explain it throughout this video and I'm going to start with well it's going to just I'm going to start with this one and this is a stupidly convoluted system that is a block swapper technically but it's the yeah stupid convoluted system that only serves to explain the theory behind it and as we kind of move on I'll condense this system get it smaller and smaller more compact and yeah faster better all that stuff and until we get to the end and get to the um, the good block stop of the one people actually use. So what I've got here to start is a completely manual block block swapper, which is extremely fun. Wow, you, you guys, this is definitely what you guys came here to learn, completely manual. So what we're gonna be building is this. It's gonna be a pop out of the wall block swapper. If you just wanna build a block swapper that doesn't pop out, all you need to do is just get rid of this sticky piston, really. That's all you really need to do. So the theory is the same behind it. So, of course, this is a sticky piston that pops in and out of the wall. So, of course, if we want to swap this block, say this is the wall here where the glowstone is, we obviously have to retract this, power this piston, unpower it, of course. These are just regular pistons in case you weren't sure, and extend this again. And to reverse it, we've got to retract the block, power the opposite piston, and then repower the block. So it's pretty simple when you think about it that way but it becomes a little less, it, it's, it's not quite as simple as it looks. So this system actually simulates what I did just there, except this bit's still manual. So this looks very convoluted, but if you wanna look at it, it's basically this section here before these repeaters, and all this does, I'm gonna take these repeaters out, it switches the block to there, and sends the pulse through the, the right there, and if you press it again, it switches it back and sends a pulse through the left. And this is just on a really long delay, just so you guys can see it. And basically what it does is when you press the button one time, it'll power the right piston. And if you press it the next time, it'll power the left piston. And basically it'll just alternate like that. So what do we do? As over here, we're going to retract this so we can actually swap it because of course you, you can't push the block past an extended piston. We're going to power it, and this time it's going to power the right block here, or the right piston here, which didn't do anything that time, but we're going to power it again. Now it's going to power the left piston. So that's exactly what was going on here. We'll do it once more. And you can see this is an absolutely functional block swapper. All we'd need to do is hook up a button to retract this piston before we start the block swapping process, of course. So... You look at this and you think, Rip, this is a stupidly large system. There's got to be a better way to do this. And of course there is. So for a short time after pistons were released, people actually did use these kind of block swappers. Uh, obviously not this exact one. This is very, very big just so you guys can actually visualize it. But people did use this kind of stuff with the switching between different pistons. But as people use pistons more, we discovered some quirks in the piston coding. I want to turn this back on. Uh, and I call these quirks because they're not really glitches. Uh, I would call a glitch uh, the bud switches. The bud switches are actually glitches. They are not technically meant to be part of a piston's coding, but they are through just leftover code or whatever it was somewhere. But I would call what I'm going to show you next a quirk, just because it is a consequence of pistons coding and is intended to be a part of kind of a way a piston works. So what we've got here is a redstone wire connected to two pistons. And you think this might work for a block stopper. It doesn't really, because if we depower it and repower it, you can see the left piston never moves. It doesn't do anything because... When we actually unpower this, 
nothing happens, it's just that one unpowered. But when we power it, because they activate at the exact same time, this piston tries to extend, but it sees that this block is going to move into an invalid block, which is the a piston arm. So this piston will never extend. Now, it's I'm pretty sure that this piston's only extending because of another a different quirk. Uh, I think this is dependent on the torch location. So we do that and move it to this torch. Yep, the left one will extend. So there you go. So that's just another little quirk, and that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's just a consequence of the piston behavior. But what I want to show you, the quirk I want to show you is when, we can see when we do this slowly, nothing happens. But what happens if we do it quickly? And let's see if I can do this quick enough. So you can see it there, guys. Oop. And it's a bit hard if the double click for it pretty fast. So we can see that if we send a quick off then on pulse to two pistons that they will result in a block switching or a block swapping uh, kind of motion. So what I believe is going on here, and I want to clarify that I don't exactly really know what's going on, uh, but my best guess is that when we turn this off or when we give it the, uh, the off on pulse and make sure it's an off then on pulse, not an a normal on off pulse which is what you usually get from pulse shorteners so you want it to be turning off then back on with regards to pairing the pistons basically i think what's happening is that this as this starts to retract so we turn it off and this will retract to halfway and then we turn it back on and this piston says i can actually extend because this has already retracted and because pistons take a full either 1.5 or 2 ticks to retract, I'm not sure, quite sure how it's changed over the updates, but they take about two ticks to retract. Uh, this piston doesn't actually react, and this piston reacts actually first, and this one doesn't actually have time to react because it's still in the process of technically retracting. So it actually allows it to switch. So again, it's just a little quirk in the way it works. And I can't quite get it, there we go. <laughs> so we can actually use this to our advantage to create a system. So all we need to do is send a quick off then on pulse to the piston. So what we're going to do is send a quick, this is a normal on off pulse, but of course it's inverted by these torches here. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're using this pulse shortener. It's just the one I usually like to use with the uh, piston like this. And we covered them a couple of episodes ago. So I'm using this to send a quick pulse to both pistons at the exact same delay. And what we should get, oh, we need to retract a piston from from uh, from the wall, and what we're going to get when we press the button, the exact same motion as we got over here. But of course, this is much. We don't actually have to double click a lever, so it's of course a lot more consistent and works every time. So this is the basic premise behind block swappers, and what I'm going to explain now is a more compact way of achieving this motion. So what you see in front of you is a very, very simple setup. It's not very complicated at all. Some of you may have made this if you were playing around with pistons at some stage. And you may have not found it very useful because, unfortunately, this keeps the, the piston powered all the time. And you can see that this, this torch is actually powering the piston as such. Uh, it's just a, another kind of piston thing that torches here will power a piston. Red Star and Peters there will power a piston as well, but whatever. Torch there will power the piston, and what we're going to do is press the button in a sec. Now when we press the button, what's going to happen? We're going to theorize for a bit. We're going to press the button, this block's going to be powered, it's not going to do much because the piston's already extended, and then the torch is going to turn off, and the piston's just going to stay extended the whole time. That's what we've theorized, of course, but what really happens? So we're going to hit the button. So we can see the piston did stay powered the whole time, except for when the button turned off. Now, why is this? I'm going to use the lever to explain this. We're going to turn the lever on. I'm going to turn it on. So what just happened there? We turned the lever on. It powered this block, which didn't do anything because the piston is extended. And then exactly one tick later, the torch turned off. And we know that torches take one tick to turn off from the first episode over there. Go back and watch it if you missed it. But torches take one tick to turn off. So basically, what happens when we turn the lever off? Flick it upwards. What's going to happen? We're going to turn the lever off. This block will become unpowered, and therefore the piston will say, I need to retract 
but exactly one tick later the torch would turn back on and pairing the piston again. So the effect is we get an exactly one tick pulse for our piston here. So we turn the lever off. You can kind of see it that uh, the, the torch repowered the piston exactly one tick after the lever turned off. And I hope you enjoyed that little bit of slow motion there. Uh, I may use that a bit more throughout the series, but uh, we'll see how we go. So basically, this really holds a key to block stoppers, and it makes them extremely compact. It means we do not need to use this here at all. So what are we going to do here? We're going to retract a sticky piston from outside the wall. Don't worry, we'll deal with this guy in a sec. And what we're going to do is use the exact same setup, and you can use the redstone wire going into it. I think you can actually use repeaters as well. We may test it in a sec. But what's going to happen? We can see we get the exact same setup that was that was uh, there, that was over here, that was everywhere. Because you get that fast pulse, it enables the other piston to extend in its place. Just like that. And this, this is really the key to making block stoppers really compact. And I just wanted to test it with a repeater just uh, to make sure I'm right. I'm pretty sure it will work. Yep, as long as they're the same delay, this block stopper setup will work every time. So let's move on and deal with this guy now. So just quickly before we cover that last sticky piston in the middle, there's a couple of things I wanna point out and that is that this little thing over here, as long as you have the torch pairing the piston and a redstone dust uh, turning the piston back on a tick before the torch, it, this will work in a number of different orientations. So what we've got here is, we've actually inverted it just to prove a point, but basically this will send a pulse. So it's exactly the same as this, except I've actually inverted it. So if we actually do that and put the button there, we can see it is exactly the same, and in fact, it's it's almost inverted because the torch is on the bottom. But basically, the torch is powering it, the redstone dust is turning off the torch, and powering the piston as well. And that's really all you need. You can do this in a lot of different orientations, infinite number of possibilities. And what I also wanted to do is that you notice whenever the button turns off, we get our pulse. What if we want it to t whenever the button turns on to get the pulse? All we need to do is invert it, just like this. Press the button. Whenever the button, our button turns on, we get the pulse because it's the opposite orientation, just as that. So that's going to be very useful. And the one last thing I want to show you is actually this little thing. Uh, it's another different orientation, but for some reason, it only works when the piston is like this. As in the piston, when the piston's like this, won't work. But when the piston's like this, for some reason, it will work. And I don't really know why this is. I think it's a glitch. It, this would be a glitch with bud switches, but again, not really sure. However, for the meantime, it works, so we may as well use it. So what I'm gonna show you here is the complete design, and I have to, I've removed a block here, but basically, all we need to do for the middle guy is provide a pulse. So what we're doing here, hit the button, and this guy will retract for 15 ticks, which is the length of a, a uh, wooden button, I believe, 15 ticks. So basically we need to retract the guy, do our block stopping, and then he extends afterwards. And there is plenty of time. Block stopping takes a lot less than actually powering a wooden button. So what we're gonna do is power that. And you can see we're using the inverted uh, input. So the same thing as the torch here. But what we do is actually running this torch to this setup. So we've actually got one on both sides, as you can see here. We've got the dust, torch, and then piston. Dust torch piston as here. And we've got one on each side pushing into each other, which will work as we know over here. And what I've got is also just a repeater just to delay it because if we had them running at the same time, it wouldn't work because you can't block stop at the same time this piston is retracting. And basically all this half slab is doing is making sure we don't uh, provide power to the block there because that actually ruins it because it provides power to this piston. And actually to make it clearer, I may actually do this. That actually makes it a lot clearer. So what we're going to do is press the button and let the magic happen. Oh. And it's very, very quick, just as you can see there. What I actually want to do is get a redstone line out to here so we can see it around the front. 
And you can see it's a, be a beautiful block swapper. Absolutely beautiful, perfect. There actually are ways you can make this quicker. I did a block swapper video uh, probably a few months ago now. Go check it out if you want to go check it out. I'll provide the link in the description for a very, very uh, for a bunch of very, very compact block swappers. If you want to go have a look at that, if you're if you're interested for more. But basically, this is all there is to it. We have gone through. We have we have kind of cut this down to the size we have now, and this is. One of the most compact ways you can do it. It can get a bit more compact than this. But pretty much this is the way you want to build every single block swapper. And with that, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you very, very much for watching this episode. I hope you learned quite a lot about block swappers. I hope your mind is at ease about how they work now. And of course, check out the world download in the video description. There is one every single episode. And apart from that, hope you enjoyed, guys. And I'll catch you next time.